and I was like, you're not supposed to be in here. Hey y'all, welcome to the Flip Flop Barnyard. I'm Jenna and today I'm in my kitchen and I realized that I was out of my foaming hand soap. Um, I have these cute little mason jars and these pumps I got a while back and I showed you guys when I got these in um, and I had some requests to show how I actually make my foaming hand soap. I also have this cute jar. I had two jars that look like this, which just fits any regular mouth pint jar, which this is a pint, it's just a tall pint. Um, but the jars that came with it were a little bit more decorative than your average jar, so I ordered it with jars. You can actually just order the pumps by themselves without jars. Um, <laughs> and now that my jars broke, so it is what it is. I can use this jar. It'll work just fine. It'll be super cute. Anyway, some of you guys asked how I made it, so I thought I'm out of soap, and I think that I will just make it for you guys. Part of the problem with showing you um, what I do when I make things is that I don't really measure things, so I just kind of do it. <laughs> Which can be a problem when you're trying to write a blog post on how to do something or tell people on YouTube. Um, so I went ahead and pre-measured my ingredients. Well, just my soap to show you how I do it. I use pure Castile soap. This happens to come from Kroger. It's just their brand. This one has tea tree and eucalyptus in it, which is good for hand washing because um, it's got like good properties to antibacterial and whatnot. Um, I also add essential oils to mine sometimes. Um, I like to use, I use what's called On Guard. It's by doTERRA. Um, I think it's also known as Thieves Oil. I think there's another brand called Protect. So it's just a really good um, germ finding kind of. It has a really good smell. It has like a lot of like cinnamon type, really warm smells to it. I like it. Um, and so I use that in it a lot. I'm not actually going to use any today just because I don't know where it is right now. <laughs> so I'm not going to worry about that. But this has tea tree eucalyptus, so it smells good. Um, I've used other brands of Castile soap. You can use unscented. You can use whatever you want. I just... I just have this. This is what we also use to um, wash the cow's udders before we milk. So um, we keep a lot of that on hand and I just use it for our soap as well. Um, there's several reasons that I like to make my own soap. For one, it is a lot less expensive than foaming soap. There's some natural brands you can buy pre-made, um, but they're pretty pricey. And so I think this whole bottle of Castile soap is 7 or $8. Um, I know there's some more expensive brands in this. Uh, but this lasts a really long time because when we do anything with it, we're only using, you know, a tablespoon or two at a time. Um, and then I also personally am really sensitive to chemicals, so I can't use any kind of commercial soaps. I react. I have specific shampoos, specific. Um, we make our own bar soap, which we need to do because we're on our last bar. Um, and then I make this because I won't react to it. And some of the kids are also sensitive, so I just can't use just any soap. I will get rashes, I will have respiratory, oh, my mouth will feel funny, I just have really strong reactions to things <laughs> so I tend to err on the side of caution. Just like I showed you I made my DIY laundry detergent that I don't react to and none of the kids react to. So all of that being said, I went ahead and pre-measured what I did was I put what I eyeballed to be about the right amount of soap in the jar and then I poured it in a measuring cup. That's my real fancy pre-measuring. It turns out that I use about a third of a cup of Castile soap to uh, pint jar. I've made it and I've had foaming dispensers that I just bought at the store. Um, you can buy some that are pretty or I've just bought like, I don't know, it was like Dial or something or just the store brand and I dumped out the containers and rinsed them really good till they quit smelling like <laughs> that soap and got all the fragrance out and then I made my own. So when I use a smaller container like that, because these they're not as big as the pint, I would just use like two tablespoons-ish of the soap. It's really simple. I just put my soap in the jar. I got one. I'll go ahead and measure another third of a cup here. Alright. It's another third of a cup. Let me get this lid off. Got my lid off of this one. I'm going to just put a third of a cup of soap. Then I add water. I just use straight tap water. Um, and I just fill it. I fill it most of the way full. You can see I just want to leave room up here for putting the pump in so that, and I have more room. My other dispenser, the pump was a lot bigger and so it displaced a lot more water. 
and this is the point where I would add essential oils if I was going to put some in. I would probably do 15 or 20 drops. Again, nothing scientific to it. I just, I just do what I do. So that's it. Put it together. Give it a little shake. And usually it doesn't need to be shaken up. It's just, um, it stays pretty well uh, mixed. But if it does, you'll notice it's separating a little or maybe settling at the bottom. Just give it a quick shake before you wash your hands. That's one done. It's two done. And let me get my lid. All right. So now I have one for the kitchen and one for the bathroom. Super simple. I can link below where I got these. I just ordered these on Amazon. Like I said, you can get with the jars, you can get a single jar. I got a two pack, you can get a single jar or you can just buy the actual dispenser part and not worry about the jars. I had thought about using, like I've seen pretty blue jars, but um, they cost more money. So I had thought about just getting the pumps and then finding blue jars, but then I was like, you know, I'm just gonna order <laughs> the matching jars and do that. Don't have matching jars anymore, but it's okay. So super simple you guys like anybody can do this um my kids help me make it all the time do you help me make stuff like that all the time you're a great helper uh and it's just overall better for your family and it's much more cost effective uh it's way less expensive than buying soap regular pump soap so all right we got our soap done now i know a lot of you have been asking about jack and his recovery um if you're new here our oldest son broke his leg about almost six weeks ago um and i have been meaning to give you an update and i just always remember when i'm editing the videos i'm like oh i forgot to update on jack so he's doing great he's recovering really well they took the cast off um he's in a boot now still on crutches He's not using the wheelchair anymore. He's much more mobile. Um, and he goes back to the doctor next week. The doctor is hoping for him to be, he can put weight on it now some. He's not walking yet. The doctor was hoping he would be to the place by then that he will be um, weight bearing with the support of the boot and we'll go from there. So hopefully he won't be too much longer in the boot. Um, we know he's not quite all the way healed. He's still getting kind of sore and stuff. So. He's doing much, much better, so we thank you guys for checking on him. We appreciate y'all asking about him and wanted to keep you in the loop of how he's doing. And also, if you watch our last video, you'll see we brought all of our rest of our poultry, aside from one chicken and the geese, uh, down here to the house. And they're doing great. Nobody's escaped so far. The one, actually, I take that back. We have one black bantam chicken. That's a little bit wild. And... Um, she had flown out of the fence, which was fine. I figured she'd go back. So the other night I went down to the basement to get something and they had kids who left the back door open because they have been doing chores and in and out. And I come down there and there's the black chicken roosting on a shelf. And I was like, you're not supposed to be in here. Um, but actually it worked out because our heat lamp for our, the chicks had blown and we didn't know it. Uh, and so if I hadn't have gone down there and seen her and then checked the chicks, you know, I don't know that anybody else would have noticed. So we were able to replace the heat lamp and we got her and we put her in the coop and now she knows that she's supposed to live in the coop down here with the other chickens. And I think she's staying in, I'm not sure. But the other, the, the guineas and Solomon are doing great. Uh, the turkeys are doing great. Gabe seems happy to have, be surrounded by animals again. He's getting to, you know, watch them even though he's in his own pen. But um, he's a good livestock guardian dog and needs a job. So he's doing great. Maggie's doing great with the other chickens. And we got, my goodness, we're getting like 30 something eggs a day. We're, we've been telling locals that we're selling them again. So we were able to sell like four dozen this weekend. Um, so if you're local to me and you need eggs, I will be happy to sell you some eggs. They're all soy free non-GMO. But anyway, thanks for hanging out with me in my kitchen today. Um, I know this video is a little like short and sweet, but I just want to show you guys how I make my DIY foaming hand soap that is non-toxic and better for you and cheaper. <laughs> you gonna show them, Hopi? Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, please go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a video. Give us a thumbs up so YouTube will know that you're enjoying it. Please comment below. Let me know if you have any questions or what are some things that you like to make um, on your own to be less toxic and or save money. I'm always looking for more things that I can make and do myself for our family. Um, we will catch you guys on the next one. See y'all later. See y'all later.